Martin Short made a career out of making people laugh, but his personal life has been marked by one horrific tragedy after another. From the untimely death of a sibling to losing his first love, the comedy legend hasn't always had it easy. The loss of any young life might be seen as a senseless waste, but for Martin Short, the death of his older brother David was absolutely devastating. He described their relationship in his memoir, I Must Say My Life is a Humble Comedy Legend, and wrote that he worshipped his brother. Short was at summer camp when he woke one morning with the feeling that something was deeply and irreparably wrong. But certainly, when my brother David died that morning, I was at camp and I felt weird and I felt like something strange and I couldn't explain it. He was summoned to the counselor's office almost immediately and informed that his 26-year-old brother had been killed in a car accident. Short reflected on not processing the information at first, writing in his memoir, Why did my 12-year-old psyche, which otherwise seemed to exist in a perpetual state of bouncy, wired joy, feel for the first time a true sense of despair? Short went on to say that the death of his brother changed his family deeply and forever and shaped his own religious beliefs. Suddenly, he realized terrible things just happen sometimes. For the Short family, the grief of losing their son and brother was still fresh when things took a shocking turn for the worse. In his memoir, Short recalled watching TV with his mother when suddenly she suffered a grand mal seizure. She was briefly hospitalized, but things would never be the same. When he learned that his mother had been diagnosed with cancer and gone through treatment years before, he would reflect, did the stress of her son's death compromise mom's immune system, allowing the cancer to recur? It's hard for me to believe otherwise. His mother was given three months to live, but as he wrote in his book, she simply told her son, I'm not going to live to be a little old lady. His mother outlived the estimate by several years, going through months of up and down health. Her return to health in the summer after her diagnosis was described by her doctor as a pure miracle, but it didn't last. She passed away on Valentine's Day of 1968 when Martin was just 17 years old. During his mother's final days, Martin Short was also dealing with his father's health issues, including a series of strokes that left him hospitalized and partially paralyzed. Martin wrote in his memoir that with both parents in the hospital, keeping track of the family affairs fell to him, and it included giving his brother Michael a check for his upcoming wedding. Martin was Michael's best man, and on the day of the wedding, they visited their father in the hospital, but they found him in a coma and ultimately opted to continue on with the ceremony. Short wrote, we kicked out the last guest at 3.15 a.m. or so, and then at 3.45, we got a call from the hospital. We're so sorry, but your father is dead. I was 20 years old and parentless. Everyone has that first true love, and Martin Short has written about how head over heels he was about Gilda Radner. He wrote in his memoir, the zany, ray of light loopiness of her smile, the giant bows she puts in her hair, that guileless children's theater lady speaking voice, the way she walked into a room and filled it. I was madly in love. At the same time, though, they had their difficulties. As Short noted, their difficulties came from not only their age difference, which was four years, but where they were in life. He wrote that he had no idea how she could have so much and yet struggle with depression, which was the beginning of a split. The end came in 1974, but the two managed to stay friends. Radner sent gifts when Short and his wife adopted their first child, and double dates were held with Radner's then-husband Gene Wilder. But then, Radner was gone, too. Short recalled doing press for Three Amigos when he started to be asked questions about Radner's health. He was out of the loop at the time, so he called home. Short wrote in his memoir, We found out that the reports were true. Gilda had been diagnosed with ovarian cancer. She died in 1989 at 42 years old. Gilda Radner's death wouldn't be the only time Martin Short lost someone to ovarian cancer. His wife Nancy Dolman also died of the disease. Short later wrote in his memoir, Nancy's death was awful, by far the most awful thing I've ever been through. He rallied, though, knowing their three children were looking to him for support. Four months after her death, he was back at work. For short, there was a sense of normalcy when he was working. At home, however, the void was there. He told Larry King in 2012. And then you have to figure it out. You know, this is, this is a thing that none of us avoid. As Martin Short was dealing with the loss of his wife in 2010, he had a devoted friend at his side, Nora Ephron. Short said that she was instrumental in getting the family through those first days, and when they gradually stopped hearing from her in 2012, they were worried. Then, after getting a phone call from Efron's son, he was told his friend had limited days to live. The rare blood disorder she had been diagnosed with in 2006 had turned into leukemia. When Nora Efron passed away in June of 2012, the official cause of death was pneumonia, which developed as a complication of acute myeloid leukemia. She had left her final wishes for her memorial, and it involved Short speaking first. Her son also told him that she wanted it to be at least a little funny. In his memoir, Short wrote, I was stunned. Be funny when one of my rocks of sanity is crumbling? But for Short, the hardest part of all wasn't the speech, but telling his children that Nora Ephron had died. He wrote in his memoir, It felt like a replay of their mother's death. Telling them was hard, and as I expected, they all cried. 